Hello and welcome to In the Making, a series of conversations from North Bennett Street School where we connect with a range of new voices, fields, and perspectives. Before we get into our conversation, I want to recognize and thank the Dora Foundation and Eaton Vance for making this program possible. Thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Kristen Odell. I'm a staff member and host of In the Making. Hosting with me today is our president, Sarah Turner. This program this afternoon is part of our annual virtual open house, which is started on Monday and is running all the way through Friday. So please check out our other programming throughout the week. It's wonderful. Rob O'Dwyer, our director of admissions is taking our guests virtually through each program. So um, check out those tours as well throughout the week. Um, and kind of the purpose of this program is while we do a great job sharing, sharing our community through all of our virtual programming at North Bennett, there's something about physically walking into our space, the warmth and belonging you feel um, that's tough to convey digitally or virtually. So um, Sarah and I asked a handful of our community members to join in, um, join us in sharing stories of what we love about NBSS with the hope that you will feel that embrace that is given when you walk through the front door, our front doors downstairs here. Um, so we're hoping to do that. And so who we pulled together, we pulled a few faculty members. We have Peter Smith of Carpentry, um, Eddie Dacius of Locksmithing, both faculty members, staff members, myself, Sarah Turner, the president, um, Kaylee Miraglia, who's a staff member, uh, but also an alumni. Um, two alumni here, we have Jen Chen and Eli Cleveland, um, and Mark Margulies, who represents the, the board side of our community. So I think we'll give a good cross section of that warmth and feeling that you, you're missing otherwise virtually. So we'll just dive into everybody's stories. Yeah, and I think we'll just kind of invite people, you know, we asked folks in advance a little bit about your background and what you were doing right before you got to North Bennett. And as Kristen said, we're hoping that this sort of recreates the feeling that if you were visiting school and you bumped into Peter Smith in the hall or you bumped into Mark Margulies in the hall and you got a chance to chat, you just learn a little bit about how people came to the school. And so Peter, I think that you were an educator before you came to North Bennett and that you were um, working with young people. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. I, I went to college and graduated secondary ed in U.S. history. And I went right into the seventh grade middle school teaching track. And uh, I was always staring out the window saying, how do I get outside and be outside? But um, I didn't. I didn't know how to do that. I, I was still new in a career track and I did teaching in seventh grade. And then I, um, through circumstances in my life, I ended up moving back closer to my wife's parents' house. And I took a job creating uh, after school tutoring programs uh, for the Salvation Army in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. And that was a grant funded position. And when that grant ran out, I, um, I was Googling North Bennett I Googled preservation carpentry and then ended up at North Bennett through a Google search, which is a pretty kind of familiar story. But yeah. I started thinking, okay, I really like history. I like working with people. I like teaching. I'm going to, my only option is go to, go into this high school setting. Uh, and then I quickly realized that I really do want to be outside and work with my hands. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to ask Sarah Turner to introduce yourself with, the, with this little um, morsel of your time prior to NBSS. You were an artist in residence in Portland, Oregon. Um, I was. And so, um, you know, my joke to Kristen was I was unemployed before I came to North Bennett. And that's because I had really decided it was time to, I was a dean at a graduate school in Michigan. And I thought like, I need to reinvest in my own creative and um, making life before I kind of take my next big challenge. And so I was, I was working as a printmaker um, in Portland, Oregon. And I just had this unscripted time and a dear friend who lives in Boston just sort of alerted me that North Bennett was looking and it piqued my interest. And so one foot was in the studio and one foot was planning a, you know, a return to leadership life and educational life. And, and it brought me to North Bennett. So it was just, and that was about three years ago, which time flies, time, time mm -hmm. flies. 
And how lucky we are to have you, Sarah. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Lucky to be here. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, sure. Um, I'll jump next to Kaylee Maraglia, who um, sits with me in the front of the school. Thank, thank God. Um, <laughs> your I love your story. You, you mentioned that you were poached from Starbucks to work as an apprentice at a jewelry, like a jewelry chain next door to where the Starbucks was. Um, can you tell us what, what happened then and led you here? Yeah, um, so I originally started out uh, just making jewelry for fun, mostly like wire wrap stuff, nothing like um, in-depth metal work. And um, the Jared's next door to the Starbucks that I worked at was the manager over there in their shop uh, came over and was like, jewelry. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, jewelry. Um, and I was really getting invested into the metal work. Um, and then it got to a point where I was doing the same thing over and over again. I was like hungry for more in the metalwork situation. Um, so I Googled ju jewelry schools, excuse me. Um, and looking at the curriculum for our jewelry program was just like, it hit everything that I was interested in learning. And so I ended up two weeks later speaking to Rob and leaving that job and starting mm -hmm. in my jewelry career. Um, so great. Yeah. And how I ended up at the front desk was uh, I was hired as a student worker and they just called me and you want to come in? And I said, yes. Um, and I love it a lot because jewelry, you're very um, by yourself. At the front desk, I get to talk to everyone. <laughs> and you're an awesome front facing person to everyone who walks through the door. It's, it's really wonderful. I love having you there. Thank you. And Jen Chen, um, you founded, you are still, and you were the founding managing director of American Modern Opera Company, um, a multidisciplinary performing arts ensemble. And you were at Tanglewood prior to coming into the piano program, which is where I am right now. Can you tell us about that leap? Yeah, um, I grew up playing piano and uh, studied art history in college. And after graduating, I uh, started working at the Boston Symphony Orchestra. And while I was at um, Tanglewood one summer, I met um, who I now called my piano technician fairy godmother, um, Barbara Renner, um, who uh, we, we connected very, very quickly. And she had always been like, oh, you should just pick up a tuning hammer and try it. And that thought terrified me. Um, and through sort of a, a long sequence of events that included me going to business school and starting this um, company, I ended up working alone in my apartment uh, on my computer for a couple of years, um, even pre-pandemic, and realized during that time, if I didn't start working with my hands again, I would um, literally go crazy. <laughs> and so I revisited the sort of idea with Barbara and she, just without even taking a beat said, and uh, North Bennett is the only way to start this. Um, so you have to go do the both, both, both of the years. There's a, there are two year, there's a two year option for the piano technology department. Um, and um, I, yeah, and I, I, I did it very, very quickly and uh, couldn't be happier. So that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, and Eddie, I want to go to you. And I know that you're a graduate of the locksmithing program um, from a little while ago. And then before you came back to North Bennett, you had started your own project management business. You were running this business before you decided to move into education. Um, you're our newest faculty member. Will you tell us a little bit about what it's been like to kind of switch from running your own business to coming to teach? Um, so thank you for having me. It's a very, very great opportunity for me to be here. Um, like, like I said, um, like Sarah said, I studied um, 2013. I graduated as a locksmith. So I was very involved in the, in the trade and I really liked the trade and I wanted more. I went to Wentworth for project management, bachelor degree. And after that, like two years in, I wanted to start my business and I did. And locksmithing is a core of my business where I started to work with clients because I do locksmithing. They allow me to do more and we started to manage a project. And when the opportunity came for me to come back at the school to be an instructor, I was very, very 
happy to hear it. And I had some training where I started my own podcast. I'm coaching. This allowed me to be comfortable and to be part of this great opportunity where the community stay the same, where everybody have a mindset of craftsmen and they, they work on what they love, which I love locksmithing. Thank you. It's great to have you. And um, Eddie's right across the hall from me. So I get to see him and his students often. Yeah. And and before you go to the next person, Sarah, Eddie, did you just tell me today that you just finished your final paperwork for your degree from Wentworth? Yes. So I submitted my last assignment and I'm all officially all set to graduate as a well done from Wentworth. Thank you for reminding me that. Yeah. So you're a, a student and a teacher simultaneously. Yes, I was. Yeah, I that was. must give you a lot of sympathy for your students to also be a student yourself. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good to have you. And I'll jump over um, to Mark Margulies. Mark, I, I know you as many things. I know you're an architect. I know that you're a hugely involved community member. And I think I heard a story that it was actually a guest speaker at your architecture firm um, that inspired you to take right. a bowl turning class. And that was kind of the first entry point to North Bennett. A lot has happened since then. Indeed. So uh, we have a regular uh, lecture program at my uh, firm and uh, it's we bring in other people to talk about technical aspects of architecture, but Miguel Gomez Ibanez, who was the president before you, Sarah, um, came over to talk to us. And it's really one of the things that I love most about North Bennett is, oh, I'm jumping the gun, sorry, Kristen, but <laughs> um, is the Save sort of, inter later, yeah, it's the interdisciplinary aspect of it. Uh, and the fact that, you know, uh, there's a relationship between locksmithing and jewelry or, or can be, right? They're both metals and and uh, preservation carpentry and carpentry. And um, so I, I think that the um, the whole business of uh, the interconnectedness of the disciplines is, is what's so interesting to me. And, and it can be a long program, Jennifer, like uh, the two or three year program that uh, that is in piano and advanced piano. Or in my case, it can be uh, a weekend bowl turning class, which has completely transformed my life uh, and um, allowed me to find an, uh, a weekend outlet for creativity beyond uh, what I do on a regular basis professionally uh, and has endeared me forever to North Bennett. And little did you know that a weekend bowl turning class would lead to seven years as board chair. Surprise, surprise, thank goodness. Who, who'd have thunk? <laughs> Um, I will introduce or prompt our, our last um, panelist here, Eli Cleveland. Um, your story is also so funny and cool. You were studying project management. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm at the wrong. I'm sorry. I'm reading the wrong thing. You were studying actuarial science at University of Georgia, and you and your roommates had a work, had like a makeshift workshop set up in your room, and you discovered that you were spending more time there than studying science. <laughs> Yeah, essentially. <laughs> um, I'd always enjoyed making things and working with my hands. And I, um, throughout college, my apartment, the whole thing became the workshop. Someone would just come over with an idea and I was always game. I had a circular saw and a hand plane that I didn't know how to use. And more and more, I realized that I liked math, but I didn't want to do it for the rest of my life. Um, and this thing that was my hobby was more of a more of a path I wanted to follow and so I feel like there's an ad for Google this whole panel so I googled <laughs> <laughs> woodworking schools and I found North Bennett and uh and I moved to Boston and waited to get in nice that's nice and, and now you're uh now you're a graduate and a continuing education instructor yeah and a substitute teacher here <laughs> I get around yeah. yeah well it's hard to leave once you get in Kaylee knows it's hard to leave. And Kristen, I know you're our host, but you're also a really important part of the community. In fact, you're a first impression that gets made when people walk in the front door. And I know you to be a creative in your own right and also a musician and also someone who thinks about retail and exhibitions and public presentations. Will you tell us a little bit about how you got here? 
Sure. Um, I didn't, I, I thought a little bit about this and I think what I want to say, um, so prior to North Bennett, um, I was working in, in fine art custom picture framing, but I also had a small side business that I was running just handmade goods. And those two complemented each other in giving me time to, you know, work with people, but then the time to run my own little passion project on the side. And I, when the job was posted for my role here, I, I just sort of, you know, jumped on it just because I had been enamored with the institution for so many years. And what I learned is that um, this is sort of the first place where I can be fulfilled on a daily basis within my, my daily work, like, you know, work as fulfillment and vice versa. The two don't have to be separated for me yeah. here. And so yeah. that's how I feel. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think we um, asked panelists, I think, Kristen, we're going to move into a little bit of storytelling where we asked panelists to think about an object or a prop, something that might help them tell a story um, about themselves and about um, what North Bennett means to them. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So um, I think you all brought your props of some sort. I have mine. Um, I guess we can. <laughs> nice. I guess we could start from the top and go back to Peter. Um, yeah, great. Yeah, I have uh, a Stanley plane as a flexible bed, but the the backstory on this, right? So the we just turn the knob. You can see how it's changing shapes, so, so it'll conform to whatever shape. But so when I was newly married, uh, we walked into my wife's. Uh, grandfather's barn and there's this old tool chest and of course that that totally absorbed me for hours and it was just fascinating it turns out this tool chest was all the tools that I guess would be my wife's great great uncle so 1890 was using and they ended up this is before I came to North Bennett so I knew they existed I come to North Bennett in 2002 and I go through the PC program, the preservation carpentry. And this is, this is the tool. I went back to the chest and I said, I, that is a really cool tool. Uh, it's relatively expensive to buy new, like an old new one. So I, I asked if I could have it. And I can remember sitting all day, second year, tuning it up because on my first job, timber framing, we had these like curved rafters. And I'm like, this is the perfect tool for that. So I've used it in my timber framing career uh, for like 17 plus years to do a lot of curved work. Um, you know, a lot of curved rafters. Uh, this is the only thing that works. And I love the fact that I'm dealing with a tool that in 1890, my wife's great uncle was using somewhere in Long Island. And uh, I, I just love that, that backstory and the fact that it's, very the, it's the best tool and the fastest tool to use on uh for what i use it for wild that's and so you it just incidentally it was you had a project in in your first year as a student here that that would apply to yeah so i was a student working the weekends for a timber frame around the berkshires and he, he had us do these uh the, the sheds which had these rafters that came down and curved at the very at the rafter tail and so the best tool to get that curve in was just cranking this around to a sharp angle and making a really beautiful swoop in the end of these rafters. And, eat, and I just kept that tool. And so all the people on the crew, because I, I went and worked for him before coming to North Bennett. So I was full time there. And, and the people would uh, always, if there was an odd project that needed a curved surface, whether it was making a template that had a curved surface, we would grab this plane and we would use it a lot more often than you think. It's like, if you have it, you'll use it. If you don't yeah. have it, you don't use it. I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, personally. Great. Yeah, it works out really well. Nice, um, thank you for sharing. Nice. And um, Kaylee, will you tell us about your prop and what it, how it tells a story about North Bennett? Yeah. Um, so recently I took one of our test pilot courses for um, continuing education and it was the artist book class um, 
online with Erin Fletcher. Um, so I made an artist book and my button is actually one of my last jewelry projects. It's a little citrine set in silver. Um, and when I open it up, it's this astrology technique that I learned um, over the summer. Um, well, before I was hired permanently and I was just a temporary front desk, I, I had a uh, I had a condition to working and I was like, you, I have to take this astrology class. And thankfully I was able to finish it in that time. And this is a technique that I learned um, um, that was recently revitalized um, from uh, the ancient, like the Hellenistic period. Um, and it's really handy because I can just open it up and it tells me the dates. <laughs> That's yeah. beautiful, Kaylee. Yeah, so uh, three of the disciplines that I've learned at my time while I've, I've been here. I love it. <laughs> all my portable. So all combined into something portable. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Jen? Let's talk about your most NBSS moment with your prop. Yes, um, this almost feels like a cop out because it's almost too obvious, but this is my tuning hammer. Um, and it was made by Charles Falk. Uh, it, it is the thing I probably use the most um, and really is an extension of sort of your body, your ears, your brain um, as you're working, which I find so beautiful. And um, it connects back to the first thing I saw really in the piano department when I walked in with Rob Dwyer um, the first time I visited, which is this wall of uh, tuning hammers. Um, and I just found it so magical that there were so many different kinds. And um, Rob was like, yeah, you just get to try them out and see what fits. And uh, it all felt very Harry Potter-esque to me. Like you get to pick out our wand. Um, and there is like something really magical about, um, uh, about being in that program, especially and particularly, I think for me, the most MBSS moment that, that I've had so far is just coming back in September 2020 after so many months apart um, and everyone being so excited to see each other um, and be together again. And we had these two months to um, kind of re uh, dust off and basically cram so that we could um, pass our uh, prepare for and pass our final exams. And the spirit that everybody had going into it of such um, support for each other and working through um, our successes as well as our sort of challenges um, was just so beautiful. And I, I think um, uh, I, I could not have passed my exam in the way that I did without the help of everybody else. So um, it's just, I, I, and I love, we have this sort of secret language and our inside jokes. And, I, I, and from what I've experienced of other classes, um, every group sort of finds their own dynamic um, that is very special and very unique. Uh, so it's really wonderful. Nice, so nice. That's a great story to come out of a tuning hammer. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. And Eddie, maybe we could go to you. Um, I think you brought a photograph to share, is that right? Uh, do you have a question? Oh, no, 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 I thought you were going to print it out. Oh, okay. All right, so. Quickly, I can show something else. I have my Ilko book. So this book is a reference for every piece made, automotive, North American. And this book saved me a lot because sometimes customer ask you for a key and you cannot find it. So I kept my book. Um, everywhere I go, so it's in my office. But one thing I wanted to say was, coming back to North Benetry School, I realized the tra a tradition of excellence, where me being a student in 2012, 2013, and kept me falling in love with construction, um, locksmithing, and then now I have an opportunity to come back and then be an instructor and give back because the school helped me when I wanted to be a student. And Rob was the one to the face and then he's still there. Claire, a lot of people I knew, it was all there. So, and 
my program was off-site um, on Channel Street. Oh. And then now we all in the community and that was very like, that's the, what touched me and made me feel like whatever you learn, you can succeed with it. Eddie, you had mentioned to me that um, one of the consistencies that was there as well was the, the uh, yeah, key wall. Yeah, the yeah. Key wall. yeah. Yeah. So the key wall we have at Channel Street is the same we have in our in, uh, in mm -hmm. our department now, saying that attention to detail and all the tools I had in terms of um, working. So now we still have some what we have new, but you can see the tradition of excellence on the school. Well, and as you were talking, Eddie, I feel like there's two themes surfacing. One is Google and one is Rob O'Dwyer. Like the two ways to get to North Bennett Street School is either Google <laughs> or Rob O'Dwyer. And somehow the symmetry of those two things just seems so, so perfect. That's funny. Yeah. Eli, can we see your prop? Sure, I have, uh, it's a little medallion and it's a little marquetry piece that's a dragon. And um, so marquetry is this, uh, kind of art of um, kind of painting with wood. And so it's very thin pieces of wood veneer that you piece together and you can use hot sand to darken them or different grains. Um, and this was made by a student of mine, Abby Smith. And I had her when I, uh, I graduated back in 2009. And then I don't remember the years anymore because time's confusing. Um, <laughs> But a few years ago, I taught my first cycle of the three month intensive furniture making class in continuing ed. Um, and I was excited to teach it because I actually took that class while I was on the wait list to get in to school mm -hmm. initially. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of what got me over the hump. I was able to you know, submit photos, get a feel for the instructors. Um, so Abby was in my class and she was a total superstar. And one of the things I show, I try to show a lot of techniques in that class. And I showed marquetry and I'm not, excellent at marquetry, but I know the basic idea. And so I showed them very simply how to use the saw and set them on their way. Um, and she took to it. And like two days later, she had produced this medallion and had a batch of them and gave me one. Um, and then the following semester, she enrolled in the full-time program and really excelled there. And then she actually just came back this last semester to teach marquetry to the current students. Mm. And it just seemed like such a, I don't know, it, it made me feel like really part of this larger thing. Cause sometimes, I don't know, we make furniture. Like it seems a little silly, <laughs> but then to, to realize that it's bigger than that. And like every little lesson I give, it might strike a chord with someone and you never know how it's gonna kind of send them on a new path. And then to have her come back and be teaching the way I learned and came back and started teaching. Um, just, it, it was really a neat moment to, to realize that. The full circle there is really nice to hear. Yeah. And so compressed in time too, because you're not talking about a 20 year period that you're describing, you know, it's just amazing that you would go from someone who's waiting to get into the program to quickly becoming someone who's teaching in the continuing ed program, helping to prime someone else to go to the program. I mean, it's really um, the amount of like skill building and learning that happens so fast here too is kind of incredible. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll go ahead awesome. and share my tool. Please. Um, so this is, so I kind of, the store tends to be sometimes a catch-all of um, random objects for display or exhibiting or whatever. I, I happen to have, you know, if you need cotton webbing, I happen to have some in the store for no good reason. And a, a Rich Freiberg in, he was subbing in PC one day and he came in look, just asking randomly, do you have any metal rod? And I happened to have had some brass rod that I had used for um, uh, jewelry stands for an exhibition. And so I just gave it to him, I had no use for it. I think it was the next day, he brought back a turned handled awl and Later on, it wasn't sharpened at that point, but later on I asked Michael Burry if he would sharpen it. And that's the, the next NB, most NBSS moment is he asked me, how long do you want the point? 
<laughs> just like, <laughs> I don't know, as long as an all should be. Um, but it's just so NBSS, just, just the, the, the graciousness, the, I took this, the, the ingenuity, um, wanting to, um, make something better. And then the, the, the kindness of gifting it back to me. I mean, just the thoughtfulness that happened in that sort of, uh, couple of days. I mean, it's a turned handle. Um, so that is my most NBSS moment story and I have a thousand of them but that's the one I chose to share with you nice and Mark Margulies what did you bring well, I brought a couple of things uh, I, none of my tools are in the area here but um, you know Eddie when you were talking about excellence that is the thing that I think most uh, uh, typifies what happens at NBSS is a real focus on a uh, high, high level craftsmanship. And um, I think about how that relates to design. Obviously I'm in the design world. And for me, it's been really a journey at the, uh, being involved with the school and you know, to visit the different studios and see the incredible patience and the dedication to detail and the evolution of the students, not only what they do, but how they think about what they do. And so, you know, when I started out doing bowls, um, you know, I, I would turn a bowl out of a piece of wood, but then I'm an architect and I have to, you know, do something more architectural. And so, you know, I do these segmented bowls. Um, the thing about a segmented bowl is it's in a way it's very mathematical and it's very formulaic, which is fine. But in my mind, I really, uh, I, I didn't so much like the idea of chopping up perfectly good pieces of wood and making little little niblets out of them and then gluing them back together again. Not that it's not a nice thing for salad, but um, I wanted to try to find a way to uh, enjoy the, a, the, the essence of a piece of wood. Uh, and I wanted something that was less um, rigidly geometric. And so I, I moved toward the idea of creating, uh, and Sarah, you've seen these, but these, this is where I'm now headed, um, and it's uh, these are uh, steamed inlays that have been um, inset into, you know, in this case, a really nice piece of babinga. And the, and the thing about in, in my thought process is that it's really about trying something or other and refining it and continuing on with the process of making it better and better. I've, I've been working on this idea for for almost five years now, because it's actually quite, you know, it's kind of complicated. Um, but I was inspired by all of the studios that, and the people in the studios, I mean, uh, at, at the school where you can see people really, really focused on detail and how they think about what they're creating and making sure that it is absolute highest standards. And that's sort of the Sloyd, uh, uh, methodology and philosophy. And uh, I think it permeates everything that happens at the school. Nice. So nice. Well, Kristen, I'm going to share my object. I think I'm, mm. well, yeah, just because then it's going to mean a, a little treat for the folks in the building. But I was thinking about what it meant to come to Boston and North Bennett from the Midwest. I was outside of Detroit and to move not only to a new job and a new school, but a new city. So the object I chose was a box of cannolis from Modern Pastry, which is our neighbor. And so for those of you in the building, Kristen and Kaylee and Peter, you're gonna um, get to share the cannolis. And I, I chose those because they were, I remember when I first arrived here and it was such a thrill to come to work in this neighborhood, like to take the tea and to get off at the Haymarket and um, walk through the Boston Public Market, walk through the Greenway, walk to this beautiful old neighborhood, one of the oldest um, neighborhoods in the city in some ways. And um, it's an Italian neighborhood in some ways right now, but it's been many, many, many different things. And North Bennett's been in the neighborhood for 140 years. And somehow for a Midwesterner to feel all that like New England when I came to work and um, come to work in a place that tourists want to come, like that was really exciting and thrilling to me. And still, you know, when I leave the building 
or when I arrive, I kind of pinch myself that my daily work habit is coming to this gorgeous facility in this neighborhood that has all of this texture of early American history and all of the ways of waves of contemporary American history and set like right in this building are violin makers and carpenters or locksmiths like sitting in the north end it's just sort of a marvel so uh, modern pastry is our neighbor they share our parking lot and um, a lot of us are regulars so anyway that kind of sums up that. my north bend experience yeah Thank you, Sarah. You were going to show, share a tool with us, but I love that you went with it. I was, and I thought, I'll bet there's going to be a lot of tools on this call. I bet a lot of people are going to share tools, so I'll try to mix it up a little bit. Sure. My cannoli just arrived. Oh, oh very oh. good. <laughs> well, that's my, other, that's my other new Zoom game, is like the Zoom world and the in real life. So like my cannoli somehow can appear in Kaylee's Zoom screen. It's like magic. <laughs> Here comes one from Peter. Cannoli for Peter. I bet yours is on the way, Kristen. While we're getting our cannolis, um, I want to just make reference to this sign of words behind me. Um, we asked our panelists to just list the things that they are, you know, hobbies, what they think their talents are, you know, other jobs they've had. And we came up with this, this rich list of all the things that make us. And um, it's just worth noting that that's just a collection of the, the, this handful here. And so if you can sort of imagine that exploded into how many people are in this building, like all the things that we are. Will you read out some of the things on that list? I will. Kristen? I will. Um, Cause it's just I some have, wonderful um, character back there. Yeah. We have arts administrator, um, leaf raker, um, timber framer, astrologer, architect, traveler, curator, golfer, longboard dancer, um, Haitian, nature lover, crocheter, environmentalist, um, saxophone player, home renovator, teacher, organizer, bull turner. It just, it's endless. And there's my cannoli. <laughs> Thank you, Marsha. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Marsha. <laughs> um, so the list goes on of all of the things that make us who we are. And... Nice, so nice. Um, and as we sort of get to the top of our program, I want to ask our guests, feel free to throw any questions into the chat for any of us or our guests, and we'll, we'll read them out loud. Um, I want to do a very quick screen share. Um, there's a picture that Eddie, we, we were going to use for one of his um, conversations, and I think it's worth sharing. Um, if you want to speak to what this means and how oh, this is an nice. assess moment for you, Eddie. Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is um, new, old, new generation where, <laughs> where um, excellence is still pursuing. So that's the key wall I was mentioning. That's the same key wall I had when I was there as a student. So now being the head of the locksmith department, I have the opportunity to teach others about the key wall and the secret of it. And this is all the tools and this is Bob. She was uh, um, the instructor before me and before she left, she gave me great training, great advice. And we miss, I miss her personally, but, um, but this is what I wanted to show where the transition of excellence is. Yes. Thank you, Eddie. So nice. I, I nice love that the yeah, and I love that continuity of the key wall, that it's always been that nice, clean, organized system. I love that. In my first year, the key wall was the featured um, image of my North Bennett Street School New Year's card, because it was just, it's such a beautiful thing, and it's like bright and shiny, and uh, yeah, that key wall's a, a, a marvel of organization, too, I must say. It is. Yeah. I'm going to throw out this um, last and very important question to this group, and I encourage our guests to also um, type in your answer to this question, and we can share them with everybody. It's all about sharing. Um, what, do, what do you think makes NBSS so special? And I know that's a tough one to answer, but if you can just come up with how you can, what do you think to you makes NBSS so special? I can certainly offer one thing, Kristen, and that's, um, I think it's, it's a, um, a connection from the past to the future in, 
in so many ways. When I think about um, the display, it's way up high in one of the hallways. Whenever I take people to the school, and I love bringing people to the school because they always fall in love with it. But um, in one of the hallways, there is a, I don't know how many, maybe there are 40 or 50 different uh, chair or table legs that are all uh, hanging or attached or whatever it is up high. And it's the complete, I think, uh, history of uh, every style of chair leg that uh, people have built uh, over the years and from the most ornate claw foot uh, and, and carved um, uh, components to, uh, to, the, to shaker, right? The, 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 the entire range. It just represents to me what NBSS is, is the, the, the array across history of all of those good things that, uh, and that, that just happens to be that particular part of the school. It happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Thanks. Other thoughts about that? We see a nice um, mention in the, in the chat. Other thoughts about what it is that's unique or special about the I, place? I would share my, I mean, one of many feelings about this is the um, diversity of origin stories diversity of backgrounds, which is what we're actually showing a very small slice of here. Um, just the, the range of places that people were before they showed up here. I mean, um, I can't, what right now, there's a former pilot in our system. There's a former um, attorney. Um, I, I, those are just two ridiculous examples, but the diversity of backgrounds. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, the life stories. Um, I think we saw that, I, I marveled at it so much over the last two years because we knew it took a little extra risk in these last two years to think about kind of making change and coming to school, maybe in a new city or it, to work by hand. And yet in people came and it was so mm -hmm. inspiring just to see people really following um, a risk to learn new skills, to learn new education, to start a new life chapter, just amazing. Yeah, the courage behind that. Yeah, the courage. Yeah. I'll read I'll read something from in our chat room. My uh, a favorite thing is everyone has such a high respect for work, hard work, smart work, fun work, excellent work. We all like to get the job done. <laughs> um, we do, and I, I sometimes I think like I work with a, a bunch of really high achievers, and it's just a terrific, um, terrific way to work. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, coincidentally, there's a question coming in that I think Peter might be able to field, which is any advice for someone who's thinking about making a pivot in their career and following in a passion? And this person's passion is carpentry. And what advice would you give someone, Peter, who is thinking about making a pivot? Because um, I know you have students who've done that. Yeah. The, the pivot is a big part of the story for a lot of people entering carpentry and preservation carpentry. Um, at some point, you know yourself, you know what gets you excited about uh, what you see doing in the future. And so if you can see yourself enjoying that hands-on and taking a pile of wood and transform it into an addition, into a great room, uh, taking the timbers and turn it into a timber frame, then it's about making the jump. And if you love carpentry and you're not sure about preservation carpentry or carpentry, because it's not entirely clear, um, one, one conversation I've had with several people is get the textbooks, right? Get the textbooks. Uh, Kristen can share with you the textbooks that PC, preservation carpentry will use, what I use, there's overlap. And if, if the idea of using hand tools, like I showed earlier, if the idea of working with wooden hand planes and axes that appeals to you and the textbooks appeals to you, then take the track and jump into PC. If the idea of using modern tools and transforming two by, lump, two by four lumber, two by six, whatever it is, into that addition, then come to uh, carpentry. Uh, I do have, it is very true, every year we have students that go to carpentry and transition into preservation carpentry yeah. or into other programs. It's it's once you get in North Bennett, you kind of expand your idea on, on the excellence and, and where you could 
go with this. So uh, just jump in. At the end of the day, it's a big change for everybody, right? For me, for everybody in this chat, it was always a big change. Yeah, great. Thank you. There are also, you just reminded me, there are also some folks in our admissions department who have been here and, and watched the school just, you know, breathe over many years that they also will sometimes if someone's coming in to study one program, they might identify that, oh, maybe this, maybe you, this would be more, you know, beneficial to you. Yeah, we had a student yeah. that was, did exactly that, right? They weren't sure and uh, and now they're up doing uh, furniture making. Uh, that speaks to them, the tolerances, the excellence that goes into that. It really, it really speaks to them, the independence to work alone in that environment at times speaks to them, so yeah. If any of you, our panelists, would were to come back as a student again, which program would you go into? I change my mind about every day. <laughs> One day it's like bookmaking and um, um, bookbinding, and then the next it's jewelry making, and then I just um, and also um, the piano tech, this, the advanced piano program is on the same floor as the cabinetry and furniture making, and we see that I see that wall <laughs> of chair yeah. legs and table legs all the time, and it's just a total dream. It's like walking up into uh, yeah another story <laughs> of the universe. So yeah, Eli, what program would you do if you could do another? Um, ever since I was a student, uh, bookbinding was the yeah. one that really caught my eye. I don't something about the tools, and you know, I I don't even read that much, but I like books. I like <laughs> looking through them on the shelf. Something about it always just held my attention. Yeah, we all do love tools here, don't we? Yeah, we do. And I was saying to Peter at the beginning of the call, I that I would love to go to the carpentry program, and it's that's the problem with working here. It's it's like it's just temptation all around you. Um, of like, you know, next lives you could lead. Kaylee, you've covered now jewelry and you've dabbled in bookbinding. What would what would fill that out for you? Definitely bookbinding, especially mm -hmm. since I'm, I've been reading a lot of translated like Hellenistic texts that are available in PDF. I just want to take all those PDFs and make them in the books. <laughs> yeah, nice. That's cool, that makes sense. Nice. Anything else anyone wants to share before we start to move to the close? If there's any other questions from the um, folks watching, we're happy to take them. Um, what I would say is, I think NBSS rep represent for me a purpose because I feel like if I didn't get to NBSS, I wouldn't be a locksmith, I wouldn't be a, no, um, a project manager. And if I have to take, if I have to be a student and take another course, it'll be locksmithing. <laughs> anything, so I love it much. Then every, so no, all due respect, but I feel like locksmithing is the best. I love it. So you would double down and do it all over again. I love it. That is commitment right there. That is diving deep. That is so great. And I, I feel like that, like doubling down is just a great place to end the evening. Eddie, that was just wonderful. And uh, Kristen and I just want to thank you so much for sharing your stories and giving this little glimpse of who the community is and who someone might meet if they visited. And um, we'll be doing the virtual program for the rest of the week, as people know. So it's a great time to learn about who we are. But with that, Kristen, any other parting words? No, um, just that we'll see you in the next in the making in the new year. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, as Sarah said, please just follow along the rest of the open house programming this week. There's some great stuff. Good and happy winter, happy holidays, happy new happy year. Happy holidays to everybody. And thank you. See you, you in the building. Thank you. See you in the building. Alrighty. Thanks for coming. Right. Take care. Good night. Bye. Thanks. Bye.